Welcome back friends. In the last video we installed Greengrass on an Ubuntu server device and installed a Hello World component onto Greengrass. We then saw that the Hello World component was able to run successfully and output a string into the logs. Obviously that's not very useful in terms of an actual application. So in this video I'm going to be updating that Hello World component to use our IPC SDK in order to talk to AWS IoT Core using MQTT. For this component, we're continuing to use Python. So in my script, I have updated it to import the Greengrass Core IPC SDK from the AWS IoT Device SDK version 2. Right now, I'm just going to print that we're connecting, call the connect function, which creates a client, and then print that we're done. Since we have a dependency on the AWS IoT Device SDK, We'll need to install that from pip. I'm using the dash t option to install it into the local artifact slash dependencies directory. This will allow me to then zip up these dependencies alongside my code. The advantage of doing this is that we are not reliant on some version of the AWS IoT device SDK already being installed onto the device, nor are we installing it using pip. This way, one component cannot affect another component. So if I run the command, it now installs locally, and we can see under the dependencies directory that indeed we do have the AWS IoT device SDK, along with its dependency, the AWS CRT. Now I can use my script from last time to simply package this up, and then upload to S3. Now that we've uploaded to S3, let's have a look at the recipe and how that has changed. In my lifecycle, I'm still just using Python 3, and calling the hello world script. In front of that though, I've added code to set the Python path environment variable. This environment variable will tell Python to look in this dependencies directory in order to find the AWS IoT device SDK that we, we require. So now I will take the recipe and create a new version. Now that the new version exists, I will deploy it onto our device. And now we will check the logs, and we can indeed see our output that we were connecting, and we were able to connect successfully. Now this shows that we are able to create a Python component, which uses the IoT device SDK in order to connect to Greengrass over our local IPC connection. Now that we have that connection, we can now write Python code using the SDK to send messages and receive MQTT messages from AWS IoT Core. I've now updated the Python code with a basic subscription example. We still have the same code to connect to Greengrass. And I now have a class which is going to handle the subscription. This method on stream event will be called every time that a message comes in on the topic that we've subscribed to. Currently, we'll just print out that we received some message on some topic. Going a bit further down, you can see that I generate a request object. I set the topic that we are going to subscribe to, the QoS with which we're subscribing, and the handler for that subscription. We then create the operation on the client, passing it in the handler. I print that I'm subscribing, then we activate the operation, which returns us a future, and we wait up to 10 seconds for that future to finish. Finally, we print subscribed, and then we go into a blocking while loop. The reason why we do this is that this is running in Python's main thread. Once the main thread exits, the entire program will exit. Therefore, our subscriber could never be called because the program will exit before it has time to receive any messages. Going back to the recipe, I will update this version and then we will create the new version. Now that it's created, we will deploy it. While that's deploying, I did leave out something important, which we will see shortly. Let's have a look at the logs now. 
Now we can see that the deployment has finished. We got our new calls for subscribing and subscribed. So all seems well. Let's try it out. If I publish the message from the console onto the topic which we expect, then, well, nothing happened. Let's find out why that is. If we look in the Greengrass log file now, I can see this log message saying that com.example.hello world is not authorized to perform Greengrass IPC MQTT proxy subscribe to IoT core on resource test receive. So what went wrong? Our component tried to subscribe to the topic test slash receive, but it was not allowed to because Greengrass has authorization policies which disallow any action unless it is explicitly allowed. We now have two ways which we can fix this, and I'll show you both ways. The first is to edit the recipe file. I've now added an access control section into the recipe's default configuration. Default configuration will be applied to the component if the component does not already have any configuration on that device which it is being deployed to. You can also force a component to use its defaults by using the reset option in a deployment. This access control policy is saying that our component is allowed to talk to the MQTT proxy with this policy name. Note that policy names must be globally unique. And this policy allows us to perform the operation subscribe to IoT Core on any resource. This means that we can subscribe to any topic. So now that we have the updated default configuration, let's create a new component version and deploy it. Remember a second ago when I said that the default configuration is only used when a device has no configuration for the component? This is where that becomes important. We need to configure the component in this deployment and use the reset option. I'm going to use the reset option with, with an empty path. This means reset the entire configuration back to default. Since the new default now includes our policy, that means that the configuration will be applied during this deployment. Now let's load up the test client again and try it out. So I will publish. And now let's check out the logs. We can indeed see that our message, hello from the AWS IoT console, came through successfully. And we got the topic name as well. This shows that we are able to successfully subscribe to the topic and communicate with AWS IoT Core. Now let's close the loop and send messages from the device up to the cloud. I have now updated the code so that we will send a message back to IoT Core. I'm going to echo whatever was sent to us back onto the topic test slash send. In order to do this, I've written a little bit of a helper function to simply send a message to a topic. I then call this new method inside of the subscription handler. So as soon as we receive a message from IoT Core, we will print that we received it. We will say that we're forwarding it onto the new topic, and then we will go ahead and try to send it. Now there is a problem here. Props if you can figure it out, but we'll get to that when it comes up. That's it for changes. So I'll go ahead and repackage and upload, and we'll get this deployed onto the device to see how it works. I'm just preparing to deploy the new version of the component, and this is a good opportunity to show you one more issue, which I know we were going to run into. So I'm going to configure the component, and now you can see that our default configuration still only has subscribed to IoT Core. So we could have fixed this like we did last time and update the default in the recipe, but let's assume that we don't want to do that. Instead, we're going to use the merge option in order to update the configuration during this deployment. Here is the new policy, which we're going to be merging in. And note that it has a new unique ID. This one is MQTT proxy 2. Our default is MQTT proxy 1. So number 2 is going to give us the ability to publish to IoT Core. Now I will confirm this and continue on with the deployment. Now that that's deployed, let's test out our change using the MQTT test client. If I publish onto the topic test slash receive, 
We know that our component is going to receive this message, and then it will attempt to send it back to us on touch less send. So why haven't we gotten anything yet? How come we got something just then? The problem lies here in the code. We're calling send IoT core message from within the callback, which received the message. The callback is running in an event group, which can only do one thing at a time. And the one thing that it's doing right now is running this block of code. That means it does not have time to send the next operation that we want to do. Therefore, this code will block for at least 10 seconds before allowing the publish to continue. If we were doing this as a completely synchronous operation, meaning that we didn't have a timeout on the future, this would just block indefinitely. So what are we going to do to fix this? The root cause is that we are trying to do two things in the event loop at once. So we need to take one of those things out of the event loop. To avoid the problem, I'll kick off send IoT core message into a different thread. This way, we won't be blocking after this point, because the send message will be running in a completely separate thread, which means that there's no more code to execute here. So the event loop will be free to handle sending the message. Let me now update the component with this change, and we'll see if that made any difference. Let's have a look and see if that actually made any difference in terms of the time it takes. So I will click Publish, and we immediately get the response back. So you can now see how important it is to understand what's going on with the threads of your program and how to best handle them. That's it for this video. To recap, we covered how to create a Python program using dependencies which are installed from pip but brought into the package locally. We then showed that we were able to connect to Greengrass Core IPC, subscribe to AWS IoT Core, and then publish a message back to AWS IoT Core, completing the loop. We also went over a couple of common pitfalls, and I hope that you now have a better understanding of how to avoid them.